For this challenge assignment, we are still working on performing operations by using formulas and functions. What I would like you to do is you'll notice that in each of these we have the instructions uh, on the very top of each of the pages or sheets. So we have challenge one through five. What I'd like for you to do is just read the question there and then try to figure it up and do it on your own uh, without me having to explain it or tell you. So, so far uh, in all of it, we have been, uh, you've been following along, uh, but what we want you to do is try it on your own because that's what you're gonna need and have to do in the exam. So go ahead and read the question up there, pause it, and then go ahead and, and do it. Only if you really need it, turn the video back on and follow along, but I really want you to actually uh, pause the video and give each of these challenges a try. So here in, in question number one, on challenge number one is, in the inventory column, use a function to display low if the inventory level percent is below 15%. Otherwise, leave the inventory notice cell blank. So go ahead and pause this video right now and try this on your own. Okay, if you're back here and need help, I will go through and help with you on this. This is the if function, if we remember that. And so it's equal if, and I like bringing it up right here. And I'm going to just do it right here. My logical test is if this inventory level is less than, and I'm just going to type in 15%. Uh, because it's numbers in that word and we're not inserting text. There's no quotes in this case comma if the value is true. I want it to say low Close quote comma and if you remember it says leave it blank and to leave it blank is just double quotes and Then do that and we see that there are three low inventories here on that and because this is a table it just filled that in for us and for aesthetics i'm just going to put it in the middle okay so that's challenge one challenge two is in the city code column modify the formula to display the letters in uppercase and so we should have a very good hint there as an uppercase and i'll go back to challenge one we have a really good hint there is if the inventory level is below so there's our if function challenge two is uh, you should know what it is, what it's asking us to do there. So go ahead and pause the video right now and do this. And you might have a little bit of a struggle on this one, believe it or not. Um, but I will give you the hint here in a minute. Matter of fact, I'll give you the hint. You can have two functions in a cell. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and try to do this one on your own. Okay, if you're back with us, let me put my cursor in C5, and we see that we want to change this Denver from lowercase to all uppercase. There's our hint, uppercase, but we see that there's not text in there. There's a formula in there, but what's great about Excel is you can do multiple formulas, so don't let that throw you off. So in this case, so I'm going to put my cursor there in C5. Five, but I'm going to come up here to the function bar and I'm going to type in upper. So equals upper. And notice that it's already got the, the parentheses there. Or, or, and then I'm just going to close it. So it's equals upper. It left the function in there, which is the left function. And we're just going to close this. Okay. Right there and click enter. And now we see that Denver is all capitalized or D-E-N. So all I did was add that upper to the beginning of the formula. So it's equal upper. And what is what is it equaling upper? It's that left function. Okay. And escape out of there. And now I can just copy this down. And now we see that New York, Ottawa, and Seattle are all, their city codes are all capitalized. Okay. Challenge number three, okay. in the inactive months column, use a function to count the number of months with no new policies by agent. 
So hopefully you remember this formula. Go ahead and pause the video and try this on your own and then come back to see if you did it right or if you need help. Again, try to do it without watching the video. Okay, if you're back, you should remember this is equal count blank. Okay, because it's counting just the blanks. It's asking for my range, and we're just going to go from January to June. I don't need my total range in there. And just hit enter. And because it's a table, it actually copied that function for us. And that's one of the difference between a table and a range, a structured range. On a range, I would have had to copy that down myself. So we we got to understand there's a little bit of difference there. And so there's my inactive months there. Okay, and on Jedi, he had three inactive months. And that is challenge number three. Let's go to challenge number four. In the email address column, use the function to construct an email address for each person using their first name and the ax at max-t-shirts.edu. So if you remember this one here, we are putting together text to create an email address. Go ahead and pause the video right now and try this on your own. Okay, when you're back here, you should remember this is the concatenate, which is equal concat. They want you to use the concat function, not the concatenate. There's even a little um, caution sign there. So equals concat. Our text one is Avery, comma, and because we're bringing text in, we're not going to do any space or anything like that. It's our quotes, and we're going to type in at max t shirts dot edu, and we're going to close that with our quotes and enter. And now we have our email address, Avery at max t shirts dot edu, and I'm just going to copy that down. And you've completed challenge number four. Challenge number five, okay. In the tax column, enter a formula that multiplies the value in the unit price column by the value in cell D4. So we're looking at how much tax we would have to pay on those Air Jordans. Then in column D, under the total price with tax column, add the unit sales price. So the price of the Air Jordans plus the tax together to get the total price. Go ahead and pause the video and try this now. And then I'll give you a hint here in just a second if you need it. Okay, if you're back and you need the hint, the hint is there is no formula here or function you're using. It's just math formula. Okay. So that'll be the first hint. So it's just doing some math. Go ahead and pause it again if you needed that hint. And now if you're back, I'll show you how to do this. So we're figuring up our tax. So it's very simple, equals the Air Jordans times the tax rate. Now, if I'm gonna copy this down, I want to copy the Air Jordans down to go to sneakers, Reebok, cross country and tennis and then slippers, but I always want it to come back and point to that cell D5. So if you remember very early and you can see and remember, you seen the dollar signs, the dollar signs lock everything in. So click F4 on your keyboard and notice it puts a dollar sign in front of the D, which is locking the D column and then the dollar sign in front of the five, which is locking the row column. If you hit F4 again, it's just locking the row. F4 again, it's just locking the column. F4 again, it gets rid of it. But we want to keep both the dollar sign in for the column and the row. So click F4 and it locks that in. So we can click enter and we see that there's $12 on tax there and $12.58. And I can just copy that down. And because I locked it, you notice down here is pointing all the way back to D5. Then the second part is this, is in the column D under total price with tax, add the unit price and the sales tax. So this is very simple. It just equals my B7 
which is the cost of my Air Jordans, plus, I'm just going to add, okay, just going to add right there, okay, my tax, C7. I'm not going to lock anything in because as I copy it down, I want it to go from B7 and C7 to B8, C8, B9, C9, and so forth. So there's my total cost with tax, and I'm just going to copy that down. And there we go. So hopefully you were able to do much of this on your own uh, on there. For those of you that are joining us and just working on your MOS 200 certification, thank you. Again, if you're part of the Management 1400 course, please go ahead and save this file and upload it to the appropriate place. Good job.